Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Tyler as always. How are you doing, Tyler? Doing good. Doing good. That's good. So, what have you been doing in Linux this week, Tyler? You been doing anything fun? Yeah, um, I've been playing around with KDE, um, enjoying the heck out of um, just trying it out again, because I know KDE, like, it's not, it's not for everybody, but, I mean, I like it it's just been so long since i've used it um so it was nice to play around with it but uh, i'm back home in arch uh using uh just dwm and uh i've i've been playing around and i have finally found a handwritten font that i can use like everywhere and that i just really like i'm using it the terminal like everywhere it's called yomogi or whatever it's like a i believe it's a google font um but it I absolutely love it. I'm using it everywhere. Uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's about it. Because I've just mm-hmm. really. All right, I'm going to try to find this font because I want to see what it looks like. I'm curious. <laughs> Let's see yep. if we can sh- show it on s- on screen here. I've so. really wanted a font that's like handwritten sort of looks fun um, but it still maintains readability and this one doesn't that is interestingly interesting <laughs> you use that in your, in your terminal man what are you so, uh-huh. uh, yep. um, that is interesting it's definitely unique because um, everybody uses monospace fonts in the terminal so yep. all right so um for me, for on on this week on Linux, or this week for me in Linux, I, I can't talk worth the damn today, so this is just going to be uh, bad. Uh, I've been, so I I really can't talk. I put a poll up on the, the community page asking for what my first long term distro review, review is because for ages I just did distro reviews like every other Linux YouTuber does them, and uh, you know installed the thing showed the applications and then i was done it wasn't a it wasn't a review so much as it was an install tutorial <laughs> and those things are horrible they're boring they get a ton of views which is why everybody does them but um they're they're just really boring to make so i decided what i was going to do is install something on hardware for a long period of time and i got this laptop back here that i use every day and so i put a poll up and debian won so i've spent the last two days trying to install debian and you would, I mean, after installing Arch, you would think that I would be attuned to installing Linux in a, you know, well. Because Arch is fairly difficult in terms of installation, you know, compared to like Ubuntu, right? I mean, you'd think that, yeah. you know, because yeah. I mean, Debian's just another version of Ubuntu, just older and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. No, that's not the case. Uh, I spent the last two days trying to figure out how to get the Wi-Fi to work on that computer, because it doesn't have an Ethernet jack. So I had to have the Wi-Fi to work. And, uh, you know, I put another post up on Twitter. I put a post up on the community thing saying, like, I, I can't get this done. People were like, trying to help me and stuff. And, you know, when you tried to dub in, you, you complained about the website. Yeah. You, couldn't, yeah. you couldn't get it to work. Well, I got it to work, but did you know that they have, like, 16 different pages for different mm-hmm. ISOs? Yeah, yeah. That's the most dumb thing I've ever heard. It's just the stupidest yeah. thing ever. Like, which yeah. ISO are you supposed to use? You know, they, there's like at least four non-free ones. So like, like everybody in the community page will use the non-free ISO. Which one? You know, yeah. they have like four different ones. Um, and, and then, you know, they have one that says it's a, like a live environment non-free ISO. I tried that and got that installed, but Wi-Fi still wouldn't work. Uh, I f- somebody finally did just give me the link to the right one, which is how I ended up getting installed. Otherwise, I'd probably still be doing it. Um, but see, yeah. that's my point. Everyone makes it out like Debian is just, it's much easier than Arch. Like, Arch is supposed to be this super difficult, like, meme. And it's really not. It's pretty easy. I mean, it's it's still not as easy as Ubuntu to get installed. But compared to Debian... It, I mean, sure, if you get lucky and you get the right ISO, or you just don't need Wi-Fi or whatever, yeah, you'll probably have a great time. Yeah, but if, if you I, don't... Yeah, if I had been using this on my main computer where I'm plugged into Ethernet, it would have been fine, right? It, because, mm-hmm. you know, on this computer, I have the Ethernet cable, I'm using an AMD 
you know, graphics car, which has the drivers in the kernel. You, you know, I'm using it. You know, it's just it would work perfectly fine in this. But I didn't want to install on this computer because I'm happy with where this computer's at, and I don't want to touch it because it might fall apart. Mm-hmm. That one there has Intel graphics in it and uh, an Intel, you know, CPU and. Um, I got it installed finally after getting the non-rate ISO, but man, it's screen tearing like a bitch. Like I mean, it's just oh. like every time you scroll it, it just looks like it's horrendous. Now I haven't had a chance to actually go back there and you know try to figure out how to fix it because there's several workarounds you can do. Uh, I did get BSPWM installed today, so that's uh, that was the the window manager I decided I was going to use with it. It's a uh, it's going to be interesting. I, like, I don't think Debian itself is necessarily hard. It's just their, po- their, their refusal to include non-free binaries in their standard ISO that's the problem, right? And yeah. like, like I understand. Everybody, we love FOSS. It's great. Hurrah, hurrah, mm-hmm. hurrah. I, you know, I got the T-shirt. Uh, mm-hmm. But there are certain things that are proprietary that you just have to have. Uh, yeah. And one of those things is drivers for your damn Wi-Fi card because without Wi-Fi, your computer's just junk. I mean, mm-hmm. I understand that people use computers before there was internet, but we don't live back then anymore. We Everything you want to do has to have the internet. If you want to even update the damn thing, you have to have the internet. So uh, the fact that at least the Wi-Fi drivers aren't included is just the dumbest thing ever. Now, like I said, I understand why, uh, but it's yeah. still stupid. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Like you can I'm... still protest like cars and like how bad they are for the environment and still have to drive one to to get to work like it's okay it's not the end of the world like yeah there you can still say they're bad and still need them like yeah. wi-fi My- yeah wi-fi should like wi-fi blobs should be proprietary but i mean yeah. you need them yeah like, so, so my analogy was some similar it would be like building a car but because you're opposed to rubber not having any tires <laughs> on it, you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. like you technically you have a car, uh, it may drive, it's not going to drive very good, uh, you know, you're not so, going to want to ride in it, right? So I mean, it, Wi-Fi and internet is essential to a computer, and it, you know, it, it, you, you for the most part you can't. Now I understand there's probably uh, free drivers that work with some cards. Um, and that's probably where Debian is kind of pointed to, but as far as I know, those situations are kind of few and far between because every, almost every computer you get is going to be using an Intel Wi-Fi card. Yeah. Like, and those require proprietary drivers. So it's, it's just really weird. And I don't know if you've tried to buy ones that will just work with non-free, like they're supposedly supposed to like just work with non-free drivers they're expensive like those well, cards aren't cheap then I, I would challenge you to go into best buy and say hey oh, yo <laughs> man i would like to buy a, a laptop but it has to have a wi-fi card in it that works with linux or it works with debian uh i mean first of all the the, the high schooler that is helping is probably like what's linux you know, <laughs> he's be like, what, what, what is this Debian that you speak of? Like, like, like and then I mean, you go into one of those places, they don't list the Wi-Fi card, so you have to do the mm. the the uh, you know the research or whatever beforehand, and then you got to know what they they have in stock and stuff. It's you know, like whatever. Uh, okay, so uh, that was what we did in Linux this week. As, as usual, mm-hmm. I'm struggling with Linux and wishing I was using Windows. Um, <laughs> Not. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, did I tell you I did install Windows on that computer for like a day? I had I had it on the in the background. I'm sorry. Of, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I talked about this last week. I had to install the new firmware for my camera, and it only would work ah. on Linux or on Windows. So I had to do that, and I trolled everybody by having it on in the background during the stream on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So yeah, that didn't stay there very long. Uh, I I. Soon, uh, it's, what did I go? I feel like I would had a step between Windows and Debian, but I don't remember what it was. This just know. sounds like you're trying to cover it up. Like you've secretly fallen in love with Windows. Uh, like, like you're you're running Windows still, now. The screen's still black back there, so it might be Windows back there. You just don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. So if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the LinuxCast on Twitter. You can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and such at linuxcast.org. Uh, we're available p- to download in audio form pretty much everywhere you'd possibly want to download it. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. 
uh, Pocket Cast, all of them were there. Um, honest, the weirdest thing is the the app that gets the most downloads for, for ours is something called Podcast Attic. I'd never heard of it. It's like never it, heard of it either. It gets like 40% of the downloads from what we actually be able to track. People use Podcast podcast addict all the time so those of you those of you using podcast addict shout out to y'all all yeah, right thank you uh, <laughs> you can contact via, us via email email at the linkscast.org you can support us on patreon at patreon.com slash the linkscast i'll shout out the patrons at the end of the show you can support uh, my friend tyler over there on odyssey and youtube links are in the show notes he also has a podcast that he just started with episode two so make sure you check that out what is that's called linux land or something like that uh yeah the linux land podcast yeah you should mm-hmm. definitely check that out uh that's also on odyssey and youtube yeah yep. um so check check that out links will be in the show notes you can subscribe to the linux cast at youtube.com slash linux cast that was the best contact information section I've ever had. That was very good. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like I was professional. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> It'll also never happen again. All right. So every single week we go through and we choose a link of news each and we talk about them. So, Tyler, what is your link this week? Mine would be um, the Audacity developers have apologized and revised the uh, privacy policy that everyone uh well i don't know i mean I, I i doubt i doubt there's one person out there who's like everything that muse group and audacity have been doing here recently i am all on board with yeah. um, well, i mean maybe if you work <laughs> at muse group or audacity they're perfectly fine but they're everybody <laughs> else not so much <laughs> yeah but um so they've they've tried to apologize and go back and um I just think it's funny because I don't see this doing anything. Um, there's still quite a few forks that are uh, seeming uh, like they're getting support, tenacity being one. So um, I don't know. This it, it, It's interesting to see them try to save face, but I don't think it's going to help them in the end. Yeah, this is something that it really hard to walk back when you're new. Like if, if this, if they'd owned audacity for a long time, if this was just the regular audacity people that had been working on it for 20 years and they made this mistake, they had built up enough, you know, uh, goodwill in the community where they can make mistakes and people would, you know, you know eh, I don't like it, but I'm still going to use audacity, right? I'm not going to fool. Yeah. Um, Muse Group ha- it has it, it is I mean it's not a hostile takeover. They obviously paid for it and they can do whatever they want with it. But it has felt like a hostile takeover because they've bumbled along from one misstep to another, and it, it's really bothered people. They have no goodwill with any of the community. No. Like I said last week, I mean, we don't need to go over it. But if they went if they'd come out of the gate and just showed like, hey, this is what we're gonna do with Audacity, and you know, gotten people to look forward to that. And then, you know, then did these things. Uh, and then they would have at least had somebody, people, at least, you know, you know they're, uh, they're screwing me over, but at least it's going to be look awesome when they're done, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so, I mean, there uh, might be, you know, some some Jim Schmo out there who's like, you know, like, I mean, they did some good things when they first came in. So, yeah. I mean, it should get better eventually. But that's the thing is, we don't know if it's going to get better eventually. They just keep doing... yeah horrible things um and i mean and the thing is like everybody has a privacy policy i mean even like you know ubuntu has a canonical has a, a privacy policy arch linux i'm sure has a privacy policy gen yeah. 2 all of them right uh the the difference is is that they're none of them are saying hey you want to know what we're gonna collect anonymous you know semi-anonymous uses data without your permission or maybe without your permission maybe with your permission we don't know we don't know really know what we're doing we're just going to put this really horrible language in our privacy policy which assumes we're going to send all of your data to russia um, yeah which uh, is awesome right <laughs> like, like hey you want to let's just send it to china too i mean why not I yeah mean, i mean like while you're at it let's just export it to anybody who asked for it <laughs> right well, you know? so it's just i mean uh, look it's okay um it, it's good that they have at least come through and s- but the thing is it's less your apology seems less genuine when you're forced to give it 
You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when when you, when somebody comes through and says, "Well, you want, you should really apologize for that," and then you apologize for that, it comes across as uh, forced and you know uh, less genuine because again, you were forced to give it. So you don't. This doesn't seem sincere to me. <laughs> it seems like, oh my mm-hmm. god, we have to do this because somebody's going to fork this and get all of the users <laughs> that yep. we just paid for. You know, so yeah, that's definitely. Um, you know, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> uh, the, the, but the thing is, Tyler, I've been looking for a, a, an alternative to Audacity. There There's aren't not. One. There's, There's not. There, like, there <laughs> aren't one. <laughs> like, like, okay, so like, I understand there are some pro- very professional DAWs out there. Like, we'll do really good stuff. And like, there is the, our, our doer or whatever. I, I, like, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Um, I can open up. It was. It, it's not. It, it, like I'm an idiot, and, and I, I like I I'll freely admit that I'm a dumbass. Uh, I, there's no way I'm figuring that out. Like I need something at least somewhat simple. Um, yeah, you know something that I can figure out. And I like I I look at that like what are all these buttons for? I'm just I'm gonna mm-hmm. start smashing on the keyboard and figure out that, what, what what. Like that, that's what I I think that's what may, that's what has made Audacity so universal is that it is a fully featured audio editing program that is very much laid out in a very easy to understand way. Because um, I mean, if you look at something like Logic, like my my buddy uses Logic, and every time I look at that software, I'm like. He's trying to tell me how easy it like how easy and intuitive it is laid out. And it, there's so much going on there. I'm like, no, no. Um, where it's just the effects drop down. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> see, when I was a Windows user, I used Audition. And Audition is mm-hmm. very complex. But that has been five or six years ago. My brain has deteriorated since then <laughs> on Audacity because Audacity is simple. So I haven't used those muscles in a long time. So it's, I don't know, it's some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. Uh, my link this week. Oops, wrong, wrong scene. All right, my link this week is about the Steam Deck. So first of all, we can talk about the name for a little while. The Steam Deck is that the absolute dumbest name in the history of names. I mean, Steam Deck. It's literally one letter, one letter different from Stream Deck. I mean, it's just yep. what? Uh, why did this Valve? Just the sad part is, is like, it's not. It's not like. I know the controversy, like, between it being, like, the stream or, like, the Steam Pal is big, but I don't like that. I don't like that name. But then also the Steam Deck is just so bad every time you Google it. Every time. Google's like, you mean the Stream Deck, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. The thing, like, if you use Bing to search for this, it actually won't even let you search for Steam Deck because it just takes you to Stream Deck. It like, <laughs> like it doesn't even assume that you, you mistyped. It just knows you did. You know, <laughs> it, it's dumb. It, 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 it's like if you search for Emacs on Google, it says, "Do you mean Vi?" <laughs> <laughs> like it's uh, like Google knows. I mean, it's just it's just it's a dumb name. But, but we can, we can move past that. It's a all right. So. Uh, for those of you who have been living on, under a rock and you don't know what this is, it's a seven-inch, uh, seven twenty p screen on with a controller attached to it that's going to be running Arch Linux, which is an interesting choice, uh, with a like a, a version of KDE that they're calling Steam OS three point oh, and it has sixteen gigabytes of RAM, up to five hundred twelve gigabytes of NVMe storage. Although the lower end is not NVMe, uh, it has a custom design AMD GPU and APU. And it says it's optimized for handheld gaming, which I can see, although it looks chunky, right? I mean, it looks mm-hmm. pretty heavy. Uh, I will say that the prices are very competitive. I Even the top-end one, which is like 599 or 549 or something like that, that's not a horrible price for something that, you know, will run a lot of games. Uh, honestly, of all the stuff, the hardware and the OS and stuff like that is the least interesting to me. The part that I found the most interesting is that they said that said that they're going to be working to get 100% game compatibility by the time this thing launches. And I think that Ooh. that is the most I mean, like I said the hardware and the software in terms of the actual devices really, you know, it's it's great. But what I'm more interested in is how this feeds back into 
actual desktop Linux. And if they can manage to go through and have 100% game compatibility but by the time this thing launches, that's a game changer. Yeah. A, a game changer? I said game changer. <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> that's funny. I didn't even mean that. It was, like, it was great. Um, but I mean... The number one reason people give of why they still have to dual boot is because there are certain games you have to play on Windows, because mm-hmm. specifically because of anti-cheat. And if they can solve that, which I don't know if they can, we'll see. Uh, that'd be I mean, that'd just be huge news, mm-hmm. right? And I, I I think it's possible. Like a lot of people have said, it's um, it's going to be really hard because you're going to need something like kernel level for. For some anti cheat, which mm-hmm. I don't, I think Valve is the one um, organization or group of people that could actually get it done um, and 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 get it uh, fast tracked. Like I, I know it could get done without Valve, but I think Valve's the only one who could get it done by December. You know, like, um, but. I the the only thing that I think uh, people are gonna f- be upset about is I think the two big anti cheat like easy anti cheat and battle eye I think they're both going to work at launch. I don't think every single I mean there are those more obscure anti cheats, and so I I feel like there are going to be um, anti cheats for you know older games or just the more obscure ones that aren't going to be a hundred percent fully compatible at launch um, which I still don't think is any reason to complain um, I still think it's going to be great the only thing though is is I'm nervous that the Steam Deck is going to be doing something like the the reason vendors and everything uh, vendors and anti-cheat will be working at launch is they're doing something kernel level for that device and if that's the case that's really I don't think that's okay because then it doesn't support and really help the larger desktop Linux community. Yeah, but I mean because it's like it's not like a. I mean yes, it's a custom CPU, but it is an AMD CPU. So it sh- I mean you would think that no. any any even if you would think that if they did, did something, it would still translation change like back. So, I mean, it's going to be very interesting. So, did you order one, or did you, like, reserve a spot? I've I've reserved one. Yep, the mid-tier. I've waffled back and forth. I still haven't. Uh, I try. Well, now, uh, if you go and look and reserve one, you're probably not going to get it till like, quarter three or quarter four of next yeah, year. Yeah, I don't care when I get it. I mean, it, it's not that big of a deal. I tried yesterday, but I couldn't get the page to load, so. Um, <laughs> yep. I, I'm not going to worry about it. Eventually, I, I'll probably end up getting one. Um it's probably would be a better idea because the later you get it, the more refined it will probably be because, you know, they've gotten through and done yeah. a ton of runs and uh, the software will probably be a little bit more refined by then too. Um, now the software being refined, I'm sure of. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so maybe it'll be good that I haven't been able to actually reserve one yet, but so I have a couple things before we, before we move on. First of all, why Arch? Like, I'm the biggest Arch fanboy you'll ever meet. Uh, but it's definitely not something that I would put on a consumer device. Uh, <laughs> um, it just it seems really weird. So the only thing I can assume is that they're going to be doing something similar to like what Manjaro does and have their own like repos that are kind of delayed back from the regular Arch repos so mm-hmm. that they don't have system-level updates that just completely break things. Because Arch, being a rolling release, breaks stuff. Um, every no. once in a while, it doesn't happen as often as the stereotype says it does, but it does happen. So it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, they go about doing that. Uh, and the other thing that I- I'm worried about, I guess, is going to be reviews because we talked about how maybe they're going still going to be some games that just won't play on this thing. It's not going to be a lot of games, but there's still going to be some games, probably in that top ten list. They just aren't going to play, and you know that the reviewers are going to be focusing on those things that they're not going to focus on the good stuff. They're going to focus yeah. on those. That, well, you can't play battle gr- battleground, uh, you know, undergrounds or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, failure, you know, under, you know. So that's going to be a, a, a worry that I'll have around the time this thing actually does come out. Then, what I mean, with the sh- chip shortage and everything, uh, I could see this thing being delayed. 
Um, I, I could see it being delayed, but um, to be honest, with it being its own unique chip, I think there's a good chance that they might they might be able to actually not they probably with, with the way that they're doing reservations and stuff i think they'll actually be able to meet demand um and like with producing it uh, again it's still i mean even with me reserving it a few days at most after it came out i'm still looking at not getting it until quarter two of next year so yeah. i mean i so think either, they'll be able to either they're not making that many of them or that it was more popular than what they thought it was going to be. I hope it's more popular yeah. than I thought, thought it was going to be. I really do. I really hope this thing really just is a smash success. Because, I mean, I, it, it, be only, it can only do good things with, for Linux if it's, if it's, success, if it's a success. Um, for for and gaming with how, and everything. Yeah. And I, and I would say with how many times that website has crashed um, so far, it's a pretty good sign that there there is at least a demand for it. Yeah. Um, and I know plenty of people who, like uh, my friends who have never considered like a Linux device or even using Linux, uh, have already reserved theirs. And mm-hmm. so, so, last qu- last question: How many people do you think are going to get this and then immediately install install Windows on it? <sighs> um, sadly, I think a, a a lot more than we expect. Because I think a whole bunch of people who are very misinformed are going to buy it and think they need to install Windows on it. Yeah. Because there's going to be some, like, they're going to, like, I mean, if you think about it, if as soon as, like, if you're somebody who has never used Linux before, you get this um, the Steam Deck, and, like, right before it, you know, like, like you get the notification that it's going to be delivered the next day, and you're like, okay, cool. And you go and look up uh, Apex Legends on uh, Steam OS or on Linux. The the results of Java are going to all be, you know, borked. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And then when you get the device, that could have all been changed. Yeah, ho- ho- hopefully they actually have that changed before the device comes out. It would be really nice if they've made the updates to Proton and stuff like that before the device is even shipped. That way, uh, Proton DB, which is where they're going to find that information, would ha- have already been updated to say, "Hey, you know, this stuff works." Um, I don't know. It'll be it's going to be very interesting. So um, those that's the news for the week. But we're going to transition right back into Valve because our main topic is: Should Valve do more with VR? Um, and this was your topic, Tyler, so why don't you go ahead and tell us what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, so Valve did something fantastic with Half-Life Alex, and I, I, I think Valve is trying to do, trying to be a pioneer in gaming in general. When, when it comes to Half-Life Alex, like, it was a very big controversy of the next Half-Life game requiring that you essentially have the money to do VR, but with things like the Quest 2 dropping in price and you being able to get VR at a more accessible price, um, I, I, I think Valve should continue to push VR forward, um, just like they are doing here with the Steam Deck, trying to push Linux handhelds forward. And uh, also, I mean, their platform in a handheld form factor forward. Uh, I, th- I think they do a good job of innovating um, for, for gaming. Um, I, I think they should continue doing it and uh, should be... I, I think we should see more uh, AAA games uh, coming out on the VR platform. Yeah. I agree, um, because I think Steam would be the appropriate kind of company to do it, because uh, they're very much focused on selling games, right? That's what they do. They're not a hardware company like Oculus is a hardware company. They're not a games company. So every game that comes out for Oculus is for Oculus. You can't really take a game that's meant for Oculus and use it on the HDC Vive or whatever the hell it's called, or use it on the Steam, was it? Steam Quest is that was the name of this? Uh, Steam Index, Index or wh- wh- whatever it was. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's very much a siloed uh, place. It's like the PS4. You know, it's yeah. A PS4 game is 
for PS4, and game developers then have to actually uh, actively target both the Xbox and game PS4 if they want it on both platforms. Whereas if they target Steam, chances are Steam is going not going to say, well, you can only use it on the the index or whatever. Uh, yeah. It's a Steam game, so you can use it on whatever as long as the hardware can play a Steam game. You can play it on there. So I think that uh, if they did a much better job of, uh, you know, allowing game developers to target different uh, VR platforms and then got those VR platforms to say, hey, we support Steam as well, that'd be really cool. Uh, I don't think the, like, I can see, like, you can already place, I could be completely wrong, you can already place some Steam like VR titles on like the HTC headset, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can play uh, now again, I'd have to be using windows, but I could play half-life Alex or bone works or whatever VR title um, and play it on my quest too. I could do it wirelessly or over a cord um, using uh, steam. Now quest is the one from uh, um, Oculus or Facebook. Okay, so, because I, I was going to try to make the point that I didn't think Facebook would allow Steam stuff, but apparently they do. That's so, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, that even makes it even more apparent that Steam needs to go through and push uh, software forward a little bit more and get more game yeah. developers working that, so that there's kind of like a central repository for uh, games that work on all hardware. It's not just for one particular, uh, you know, game system. Yeah. Um I think the biggest part would be for Linux in general. Because, like, right now when it comes to VR, like, mm. it doesn't really matter what headset you have. Like, if you're using Steam, you can play any of your VR titles on whatever. It doesn't matter if you've got a Valve, uh, an HTC, Oculus, whatever. It's going to run. Um, I mean, even the more obscure brands, it, it's going to run except for when it comes to Linux. As soon as you move over to Linux, even if you have Valve's own hardware, most likely um, mm. the games and stuff, like you're just going to have weird bugs and errors that you're going to run into. Um, yeah, I could see it eventually happening happening for Linux if they get Proton to the point where it's perfected. You know, well, you know see, I, mean? I, I don't even know about that. Because, I mean, if you think about it now, like Proton does does amazing stuff like the fact that the fact that uh resident evil 4 with just the latest version of proton i can just click and then open up and there's no problems it just plays the game uh, i mean a, a lot of stuff when, when it comes to vr i i feel like if the proper time was put into it i mean because that's really about anything like any equation is if you throw more time into it, uh, it, it'll eventually happen. I think with VR, it's just how much time is, uh, until we get a rock solid experience through Proton. Yeah, well, I, I mean, there's several things, right? So, like, um, Valve is a very small company. They're like the most profitable company in the world based on the number of employees they have. I mean, like, <laughs> they employ like 12 people. I mean, and it's more than that, but it feels like it's like it's a very small number of people, especially when you compare it to like what Oculus or you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Facebook or Apple or Google or whatever. You know, so uh, I worry a little bit about them becoming a little bit too stretched out a little bit and things going to because they've. The thing about Valve is that they've never done a good job with um, iteration, right? So they uh, come out with, like, the Steam machines, and, like, yeah, they didn't do the hardware, but they abandoned those things because they couldn't really get a third the third-party hardware vendors to actually embrace them and do a good job on them. Uh, but they backed out of that really quick. Like, they didn't have... They didn't put any... Uh, they didn't have faith in it, so that once it looked like it failed they didn't actually just stick with it and see if they could fix it they just abandoned it because again they're a very small company they don't really have the resources to stick to something that's a complete failure uh the steam controller uh and while they've somebody pointed out to me because uh, when i made my video on the steam deck uh, i pointed out that the steam controller is a failure and they you know it, it came out people bought it but they never come out with a second one but somebody pointed out that they've actually taken ideas from the steam controller and put it on like the thing for their um, their VR thing, and they put it on the Steam Deck and stuff. So, uh, I guess in that way, the, the Steam controller wasn't actually a failure because they've gone through and it was like a beta test. But it, uh, 
the, I, I worry not only for the, their VR stuff, but also for the Steam Deck. It, they don't do a very good job of doing a second version. Uh, even mm-hmm. if the Steam Deck turns out to be a very popular device the way people use technology these days, they always want the next one that has the best and biggest processor. And, and we can't be waiting for the Steam Deck 2.0, like Half-Life 3, where three generations from now, and I mean human generations from now, will see a, a second version. Right, and especially when this is a computer, right? The Steam Deck itself is a computer. I mean, somehow we've transitioned back to the Steam Deck, but, um, you know... Computers very much, in, in terms of software and stuff like that, require oftentimes much more newer hardware. It, 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 Nintendo and the Switch get away with having a, a processor that's four or five years old now uh, because it's not a computer. It's just running their... I mean, it's, it's running Mario. We we have <laughs> Game Boys that have run Mario for 40 years, you know? You know, it, 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 it's not a high-taxing, you know whatever this is go- the, the steam deck itself is, is a you know it's a computer it's going to be meant to be playing triple a games so that means that as games progress and get more you know require more resources this hardware is going to have to have more resources given to it in a ver- second version and valve has never done a second version of anything <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. they, like, like they did, they did uh, like Half Life Two. That was their the last time they've done a sequel to something, and that was before Steam existed. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. I mean, I, 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 like so, uh, I'm I'm more in terms of VR. Uh, the you said the thing was called the Index, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That thing is now what two and a half, three years old. It's been yeah. around for a while, right? Yeah, it's um, a couple where, years old at least. Where's version two? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like where's version two? Like, and we don't like we don't have, have rumors of a version two, and it, it, and I think it's because they're such a small company, they can only focus on one project at a time. So now, once they get the Steam Deck out, maybe they'll go back and do a version two of a of a, of the uh, VR thing. I don't know, and that and that would be extremely if if Valve was to take time and take what they learned from the index and be competitive. With something like the Quest, where for I mean, th- for three hundred dollars, you have a on-the-go experience. If you could take something like the Steam Deck's hardware um, and make that available, like inside of a headset, um, and do VR like that on the go, that would be extremely interesting. I would be very interested in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's something that I don't think Valve is really going to come out like so, sometimes like I, I, I I've, I've always said like Valve is somebody who will like if they were a person they would come out and be pretty regular most of the time and then occasionally once in their lifetime they will come out and they come out swinging and it's amazing but it it's on a very rare occasion yeah um I think the bottom line is they just need to hire more people. <laughs> yeah, they need yeah, to get a little bit bigger. Yeah. You know, um, mm-hmm. the, you know, Blizzard was the same way for years, right? Before Activision bought them, mm-hmm. they're a very small team, and you could tell that because oftentimes they got focused on one project, and then you know it was very segregated in terms of what they were working on. You know, it came out in different set parts of the year. Um, mm-hmm. Once Activision bought them, they were able to focus on all their games, they come out with new games all the time uh, because mm-hmm. they got much, much bigger. Um, but when Blizzard was small, you know, the, they just worked on one. And it feels like Valve is kind of the same way, even though they make all this money. I mean, they make tons and tons of money. Yeah. They're still very much a small team. And uh, the more products they come out with, the more I'm very much worried that things are going to fall by the wayside. Like, the, the index thing has fallen by the wayside. I'm worried that the Steam Deck is going to fall by the wayside. Uh, the only thing that they seem to be able to focus on and keep kind of up to date is Steam itself, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's very, very interesting. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I've never... So, just a small confession. I've never once tried VR. So... Oh, um, you absolutely have to. Uh, I'm not... I'm, like I, I said this in my in my Steam video, I'm not a gamer, man. Like, I, like, I'm just I'm I'm not. I, 
I play Hearthstone every once in a while, and I can't even know if I... I, I don't even know if I can say that, because I haven't had it installed in probably three or four months now. Uh, mm-hmm. So I can't even say I play Hearthstone anymore. Um, other, the games that I have installed in Steam right now are City Skylines and this new Descenders game, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, it, other than well, that, I... I, I, I will say this. You don't have to be a straight-up gamer to f- absolutely fall in love with VR. Because as soon as you try out VR, it's it's one of those things where you can sort of... You can try to imagine it and it'd be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But until you've, tr- you've tried it out, you don't know exactly how cool it is. Yeah, like, see, I, I always equate it to the, my first experience using the original Nintendo Wii. Like everybody, mm-hmm. was, everybody bought everybody bought a Nintendo Wii, and everybody used it exactly one time. Yeah, that's cool. And then it just started collecting dust because it was also it was also the stupidest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I'd be worried that the you know I spend four hundred dollars on the quest or whatever, play mm-hmm. it one time, and then it would be a waste of four hundred dollars. So I'm very I'd be very very worried about that. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll try to find a friend or somebody who actually has one that I can try. So that that's would... that's the good part. Like there's because the quest two is cheaper. I have a lot of people that I know that that do do use it. The the thing about the quest that makes it like fun and like sort of unique is like yeah, it might collect dust. Like you know there like there are definitely like a full week has gone by where I haven't touched it. But there's always that like. There's, there will come a day when you're sitting there and you're like, do I want to actually like, uh, like fight uh, like zombies or like shoot, uh, like in, like in a, in, do I want to want to play Call of Duty and actually be there? And like you have that option in VR where you can like, the, I, I have played VR before where I have been rolling around on my carpet and like, squatting like peeking around like shooting like it's it's so much fun um but it is very much a niche thing you're not going to be doing it every day it's not going to replace normal gaming yeah i have the crappiest knees in the world so i probably wouldn't be getting down (laughs) like because you want to get my fat ass back up (laughs) that's the problem with me like i have like really bad knees so anyways um all right let's go ahead so there was the main topic we did a really good job of getting through that and you know I've realized something, Tyler, in this whole show so far, we haven't had a single tangent. Like, last week, it was Jeez. all tangents. This year, this week, we're staying right on time. Maybe it was because we're running late. I don't know. But <laughs> uh, no tangents. Anyways, so every week, we choose we each choose a pick. And it used to just be apps, but we decided to broaden it up a little bit. We can choose whatever we want. So, Tyler, what is your app of the work pick of the week? Uh, mine would be Godot. Um, fantastic game engine, uh, and you can use it on just about any platform. I'm I'm pretty sure there's even like BSD builds of Godot. I would not be surprised. Um, but it's a it's a great 3D engine, and I've been surprised with what it can do. It's pretty easy to get. Um, good post-processing effects going on um, like depth of field bloom um, uh, you know a- anti-aliasing um, and then uh, we're s- we're starting to mess around with uh, PBR or the photorealistic textures and stuff uh, and, and using those inside of Godot and it it has surprised me how how much you can do in it with 3D, it's still it's still got a lot of improvement that needs that needs being done. Um, but yeah, it, it's a fantastic 3D engine, completely free and open source. So mm, love it. That looks really interesting. Uh, obviously, I'm not a gamer, so or I'm not a gamer. I'm also not a game developer. So uh, uh, I always like I watched a few of your streams where you're working on your game, and mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, man, he's really talented. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like uh, I look at like, like, oh man, I I can't do any of that shit. <laughs> like, I, I I studied history in college. What have I been doing with my life? <laughs> I could have been doing that. <laughs> and, right. and then even for me, I'm like, oh, I wish I knew more. I'm I'm not good enough. Well, I'm sure you probably look at like actual like 
people who get paid lots and lots of money to be developers are like, oh man, I want to be like that guy when I grow up. There's <laughs> 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 just levels of experience, and I have zero experience with with game development. I'm like, then you you do the like you created a whole world, and I, I draw stick figures when I want to draw <laughs> stuff. So <laughs> it's horrible. All right, so I I know I said I was not a gamer, but. Uh, like week and a half ago or something like that, Steam had a sale. I mean, they're always having a sale, but uh, <laughs> on, on this particular sale, they had one called Descenders, and um, I've always been a big racing game guy. And um, well, big back when I was a when I was a gamer and had mm-hmm. like consoles and stuff like that I played gaming. Like Gran Turismo Two was like the 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 bomb. I mean, back then we actually said the bomb. Uh-huh. Uh, like it was it was ages and ages ago. It was like on the PlayStation Two, I think it was. And mm-hmm. it was really good, and we played a lot of it. So I've always, I think nostalgically, I've been trying to find some racing games I could get back into. And Descenders was on sale, and it's a big, it's a bike racing game, and it has native Linux support. And uh, the controls are a little weird, but the graphics are really good. Um, and it's definitely something that I'll probably play quite a bit, but it's. Um, also, probably one that eventually I'll probably stop playing. But the, do you remember like the Tony Hawk games, like where mm-hmm. you 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 played on a skateboard or whatever, and you got points for doing trick combinations like that? This is mm-hmm. kind of like that where, you know, yes, it's a racing game, but it's also one where you can do you know bike tricks. It's it's cool. Um, it was also pretty cheap. I think I paid, I think I paid like nine dollars for it so if you watch for it you can oh, probably sure. get it on sale normally it's 24.99 so um, okay. i don't think i would pay 24.99 for it but it's on sale mm-hmm. all the time yeah uh, that's so, one thing i love about steam gotta yeah. love about steam you always yeah, get a game on sale yeah uh, we used to have a furniture company here in michigan called art van and the joke was they were always having a sale because they're like advertised all the time. Uh, they've mm-hmm. since gone out of business because <laughs> you can't. <laughs> turns out if you put everything on sale all the time, you can't stay in business for very long. Um, but Steam's kind of like that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, th- that is it for us this week. Before I go, I'd like to take one thank our current patrons: uh, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Chris, Mr. Mitchell, Mister Fox, American Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, uh, coming up next week. Uh, Technically, next week was supposed to be our um, our bash challenge, but Tyler has graciously said we can push that back a week because uh, I still just have a vague idea of what I'm going to be doing. I, I, now that I've, now we've changed the rules to be more a little bit more lenient and <laughs> not not as horrible as I originally said them. I, like the, the, the stupid thing is. I came up with the rules. Oh. <laughs> like, like I could have came up with any rules I wanted to come up with, and I boxed myself in. It was it's not great. Uh, but so that can be coming up in two episodes. Uh, next week uh, is going to be then. Um, we're going to be talking about federated social media and whether or not it's a good thing. So we're going to be talking about Mastodon and Matrix and all that kind of stuff. So that should be an interesting topic for us to cover so uh make sure you join that make sure you subscribe hit the like button all that nonsense and we'll see you next week all right